Hello viewers of Biotechnica, welcome back again to another video. So today I'm going to talk about the most asked question for many of the biotech fresher. Yes, you know many technical skills in the laboratory, but when we come to the programming skills, biotech freshers or a graduate lacks. So today in this video, I'll be talking about the top five programming languages that every biotech fresher or an experienced must learn. So come along with me and let's discuss the complete topic in detail. So when we talk about the second fastest vaccine is mumps vaccine, which is actually prepared almost five years. But when we talk in case of COVID-19 times, we actually got the vaccine within one year period. But how this is made a bit faster when we talk about uh, the mumps vaccine, which is created almost, it took like five years. But how this actually happened? It is mainly because of artificial intelligence, uh, big data analysis, along with bioinformatics. So as a biotech student, if you're going to talk about any sort of research in order to make your research work or your interpretation of your data or sequencing a DNA or sequencing an RNA or microarray techniques or many things, you need to know programming skills, which makes uh, things a bit faster than anything else. So today, let's talk about all the top five programming languages that you need to know so first let's talk about uh, python or to be very specific to biological terminology we can call it bio python which is the version of python only so i i personally suggest python for all of you this is really really important and i'm going to tell you why this python is very important suppose let's take an ex example uh, if you can also perform it uh, in your laptop, it's an open source for all of you. You can access this over there or you can even download this. So one example I can tell you is that you can actually transcribe a DNA into RNA. As an example, you can do it in a laptop. Like go to NCBI and take some of the DNA sequence of any sort of things like hemoglobin or insulin or anything and you just paste the gene sequence in the python and then if you're going to arrange it you can literally transcribe the dna sequences into an rna this cannot be done actually when we talk in case of a dry lab technique right so python is really really helpful so this is one of the example i'm telling you so first question for us is why do you have to learn python it's the simplest language if you are a beginner biotechnology fresher or an experience who would like to learn programming I would suggest definitely you can go for Python. It's very easy. It's available. All courses of Python's available online for you. You have a lot of materials to study Python available overall. So open source for everywhere. And people who love coding. Yes, if I have to talk about, there are two set of people who like coding. Certain type of people who like statistics. So if someone who likes to do coding and they want to design their own software, people used to go for Python. So if someone loves coding over statistics, then Python is going to be your choice. And it's very, very good and very easy to learn. It's very easy to read also. And it's most widely used throughout the globe. And it's going to support a lot. And it's easy learning curve. And it's very consistent and readable syntax. You can actually solve many biological problems using this Python. And it is very, very, good for researchers and as i was talking about in most of the videos about the skills that you need to have uh, one skill is about talking the technical stuff one is your uh, uh, soft skills that I can say or the hard skills another one is definitely going to be your programming skills so definitely learn python it's available online for everybody there are uh, places with, where it is available free of cost for you also and how this python is helpful in research if you want to go in for research these are some of the things that you will be doing with the help of this python so it is useful for DNA sequences manipulating a DNA sequence RNA sequence amino acid sequence as I already mentioned transcription can be seen through a python also and it's very very compatible with other programming languages it's very easy to incorporate and it has a very uh, well library set up for solving many scientific problems for you if you go and understand you will understand what exactly i was telling to uh, tell to all of you so learn python which is available and of course what's the application of this python of course we talk about dna sequencing before we talk about next generation sequencing so if you want to 
perform NGS, you can use Python and literature searches. You can go in for literature searches and you can also manipulate the DNA. You can just make genetic changes in the DNA with the help of Python. And you can also go in for protein sequencing, amino acid sequencing. You can go for it and you can also go in for data analysis and visualization. But here you will be learning a lot of coding over statistics. So if you are someone who would like to go in for any bio companies, biopharma companies or research or any of these things in India or abroad, definitely Python programming is a must. Definitely, I'm going to suggest you personally uh, from my side. The next personal suggestion from my side is going to be R programming. So to compare Python and R programming, R programming is mainly for uh, statistical analysis over coding. So if you're someone who are doing research and you would like to, we people will talk about SPSS and OVA. R programming is very, very good when you go in for statistical analysis. So R programming is best for statistical analysis. Now the question comes for us is, what is this R programming? It is used for statistical analysis. Suppose if you have a survey and you wanna do analysis on that, you can definitely go for R programming. And it's very popular in the biological world. Yes. So people used to compare bio, uh, BioPython with R programming. So if you are someone, uh, biotechnology students or anybody, at least these two programming is a must. Even if you're not uh, knowing many other program, at least uh, Python and R programming is a must for all of you. So this has become popular because of Bioconductor Project. If you go to this website, you will find a lot of things available here like a Bioconductor Project. It provides tools based on R programming only. That's why we used to go in for biological data analysis. Now the question come for us, why do I have to learn? What is the impact? It's, it's free of cost, open source. It's available online for you. And you can do data analysis. Yes, you can easily collect your data and you can go in for statistical analysis and it's related to other languages also. And it has a very good quality graphics also. And if you are someone who is looking for research, then I would suggest definitely you can see the list of R programming helpful for many, many sources. See, get a list of strongly regulated gene from your microarray data. If you have performed microarray, all your data, if you have collected, you can actually list out all the regulated genes over there. And you can also uh, perform this one, do a pathway or gene ontology analysis. You can check in for the pathway of any genes or any proteins, everything over there. You can also check the quality of several type of data like sequencing, mass spectroscopy as i already mentioned technical skills you need to know mass spectroscopy gcms uh, flow cytometry microarray so when you know the technical stuffs you have to check in for the data so how you actually you get the data after your technical analysis and then you have to know how it can be uh, statistically done analysis so that is with the help of r uh, programming and it also helps you to have an idea of which transcription factor must be regulated based on the list of regulated genes. Suppose there are 10 regulated genes that you're going to see, uh, which are acting as a transcriptional factors, which in expresses. So these transcriptional factors, which one is more regulated? You can actually analyze all those things during this data analysis. And of course, automated analysis of qPCR data. You can also incorporate qPCR data. And of course, this is mainly for statistical test Whichever data you provided there, it's going to be very easy. If you're some researchers who would like to go for it, then you have statistical analysis to be done. Definitely, I would suggest more than SPSS and ANOVA, our programming is really, really going to be helpful for all of you. Next, the next question, if you are a researcher, I'm going to tell you some free R tutorials for beginners. You can go to this one, which is readily available for all of you. Uh, this is usually uh, universities. You can see abroad are providing online courses free of cost. Uh, for programming very specifically in biology and they have some projects also you can literally go for this uh, R programming tutorials also and you can find a lot of these days uh, python R programming everything is available free of cost and it's available in all sources so you can also check into that the next one as i told you first two are really really important the next one i'm going to talk about is javascript most of you know about JavaScript. If you are someone who wanted to know, then definitely you can go for it. Now the question comes for us is, why do we biologists have to learn this JavaScript? So it is helpful in visualizing the biological data. There are differences. We'll be coming up with many more videos of all these things. And JavaScript in biological research, yes. When we talk in case of Hardy Weinberg's uh, principle, uh, Weinberg's principle, or when we talk in case of genetic drifts, when we go in for ecology or the spread of diseases, 
or mutations or migrations of species. So we used to do analysis or data analysis for those kind of things. Then usually we will go for JavaScript and JavaScript, when we have to talk apart from biology, almost 67.2 percentage of the entire world community uses data on JavaScript. Uh, in most of their websites. So that's how it actually works. So JavaScript is very well-known programming skill that not only in biology, everybody used to know. So you can definitely learn JavaScript, which can be incorporated into uh, visualization of biological data. Uh, everything easy, of course, for you. And I'm going to show you some uh, components that bio Java script is going to have. Everything is JavaScript, Python, and our programming, we are telling it, but it's usually bio Python, bio JavaScript, everything. So you can see protein feature viewer. Also, you can see here about the proteins. You can see gene expression summary. You can check here. Suppose if you're going to put over your gene, all the expressions you can check interaction tables you can see protein 3d dimensions you can see in the form of pdd format and protein portfolio chromosome visualization as i already mentioned visualization becomes very very easy using javascript model so these are some of the advantage of using javascript so you can also take up javascript as the most important thing so the next comes Perl. yes so Perl is a wonderful programming language. so python Perl, and our programming are really good enough to take up so what is this Perl? it's an object oriented pro programming languages and why do you have to learn it's very easy uh, for the process of manipulating dna or proteins and it's very much useful in research when we talk in case of uh, our programming is also helpful for interpreting biological data this is also helpful like dna sequence sequences, protein sequences, three dimensional structures of a protein, everything you can learn it through this BioPerl. So BioPerl is one of the important programming languages as a biotech fresher or an experience you need to learn. The next important programming language I'm going to talk about is MATLAB. Okay, so what is this all about? It is also a wonderful programming languages for all of you. And why do you have to learn if you are someone who has studied pharmacology and you want to go in for a drug analysis, then you want to incorporate pharmacokinetics over there, then this is just going to be your uh, programming language you can go for incorporation of mathematics and system biology, which is growing these days and bio image processing. Of course, most of the things that you're going to see it over here are biostatistics only. So you can also use it for your biostatistics purpose. And it's mainly responsible for data analysis. You can perform spectrum of analysis. I'm going to list out uh, whether it's going to be phylogenetic tree or microarray or sequence or mass spectroscopy or gene ontology. This MATLAB is definitely going to be helpful for all of you. So we've been talking about the top five programming languages, which every biotech fresher should learn or must learn, I would suggest. Uh, first, you start off with bio Python or Python, which is available for you, all of you. Uh, open source is available and we are coming up with many more uh, uh, how to become a programmer in biology also. So you can also have this workshop, which will be coming online, get updated over there. So our programming definitely a must for you. And then go in for Perl and then take up JavaScript, MATLAB, and there are many things, C, C++, C Sharp. There are many, many programming languages which are actually available. So most important thing for a biotech fresher is these five, uh, top five programming languages, I would suggest. First, initially start off with uh, the beginners one like Python and R programming, and then you can proceed on with the rest of the things. So I believe that this video is helpful for all of you. And what do you think about uh, the best programming tools that we can incorporate in biology? What's your suggestion? Put it in the comment section. Thank you all of you for joining.